Amen. All right, we would like to continue this series. Is the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Occult. Again, I would like to repeat. Is the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Occult. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we thank you again that we're able to stand before the listeners in cyberspace, O oh God, and utter the words that thou hast written down, amen, in this Bible. In concern, what is truth, amen, amen, and what is error, O oh God. Thank God we don't have to feel our way. Thank God we can know what thus saith the Lord, Lord God. Thou hast not given us a spirit of confusion. Thou art not the author of confusion, O God, Lord. But you have granted unto us, amen, and to all men, if they're willing to live right, the complete understanding of your word. So bless and anoint, O God. You see, many people that are bound, O God, by some form of religion, amen, some form of practice that's not biblical. But, oh God, we ask, dear God, that you would show them the door, which is Christ. For he say, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man can come unto the Father except he come by me. So, Lord, open that door, oh God, in man's mind that, Lord, you can go in, Father, and reason with him. You say, come, let us reason together. Reason together, saith the Lord. Father, help man out. Oh God, Father, for he is lost for the most part or confused, dear God. But Lord, you're not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. So even now, Lord, we ask that you will bless this teaching, oh God, and may it go deep down in the hearts of the hearer. We do ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Turn your Bibles to 2 Peter, the first chapter. And we're going to read from the 16th verse down through the 21st verse. Now, the title of this series is, Is the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research a Cult? But if I was subtitle it, amen, because the first video was a strong delusion. If I would subtitle this one, I would like to subtitle it a more sure word of prophecy. So let's read this text. Amen for the glory of God. For we have not followed cunningly devised fable when you have made known, when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. This is Peter talking about his first coming into the world. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. I would like to emphasize. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day star and the day star rise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You know, I like that thought. A more sure word of prophecy. Amen. We have many false prophets in the land today. Amen. Many, many false prophets. You can just about go down any street and see a bunch of steeples, church steeples sticking up. And I almost can ensure you in most of those steeples in what you're looking at, there is 
a false prophet. Now, Rick, are you saying everybody is wrong? Of course not. Amen. That would truly be an unfair assumption. But I can tell you, amen, the majority of them are, because Jesus said, many shall say unto me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? cast out devil, and done many wonderful works. And he said unto them, I never knew you, because your work was of iniquity. Now, as I teach you a thought come to my mind, there is a Bible test which determines a true prophet from a false prophet. Turn with me. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18, 18. Amen. You know, that scripture really wasn't on my list. But I tell you what, I think God want us to say something here. Listen to what Moses said. 1818. 18. He was talking about a prophet who was going to rise up. Amen. This was the promise of Jesus Christ. The promise of our Savior. The promise of the Messiah. And he said, this would be the test that you would know this true prophet. Amen. He said, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And Christ said that of himself. He said, all that the Father told him to speak that which he spoke. Read it in St. John, the 17th chapter. 19 verse, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my voice, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. In other words, he said he would kill that prophet. He would put that prophet to death. Amen. Amen. That prophet will end up in hell if he began to speak. Amen. Something that God has not told him to speak. A false prophet every day stand in jeopardy. Amen. Of losing his soul to eternal damnation. All right. He says here in the 21st verse, and if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the words which the Lord has not spoken? See, we need to put these prophets to the Bible test. Amen. To see if they measure according to the Bible. Amen. Jesus said, by your fruit you shall know them. Amen. A corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit, and a good tree cannot Bring forth, amen, corrupt fruit. Amen. Your fruit determines the person you are. Amen. If you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit budding in your life, amen, love, peace, joy, amen, and caring for soul, it will show out. For the most, in most cases, a pro, uh, false prophet don't care about soul. He cares about his pockets. He cares about his bankroll. He cares about his car. He cares about what he can get from the people. He is constantly making merchandise of the people. Amen. 21st verse in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet, here is the criteria. Here is the Bible test. When a prophet speaketh, in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, in other words, if the thing don't follow through, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shall not be afraid of him. Amen. God don't want us to be afraid of these false prophets. You don't have to be afraid of a false prophet. Why? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, when the spirit of God is in you, it will stand up against a false prophet. When the enemy, amen, will come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. What's the standard? The word of the living God. Now, getting back to the series, amen. 
Dr. Kinley and the Institute of Divine Metaphysic Research have made such claims, amen, that we would like to put, amen, to the Bible test. Now, I have a whole list here of their claims, and I may not get to them all, but that which I can get to, I will get to. And I want you to note one thing, amen. If we put it to test, according to this rule, what we found here in Deuteronomy, amen, the 18th chapter, it has to pass this Bible test. Because if it cannot pass that test, it is proof that Dr. Henry C. Kinley is a false prophet. Amen. Now, number one, IDMR, and I, that's an acronym for the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, and you might hear me use that to kind of cut things short, amen, and get to the chase. They claim that Henry Kinley only has the right to interpret the Bible. The Institute of Divine Metaphysical metaphysical research claimed to believe the Bible, but they don't trust what we trust the one we have today, saying it was not preserved. And we'll admit it is not in in inerrant, in other words, without error. It then has come under the unique interpretation and founder of Dr. Henry C. Kinley. Now you don't believe the Bible, but you take and use the Bible, amen, to your advantage, to get, amen, souls to follow you. Now, you know what? Amen. Some people act like serving God, and some of these false prophets, amen, is like going fishing. They use the Bible as bait, like bait on a fishing hook, and they're reeling out there, throwing out there, and once the bait is out there. The fish, amen, gets the hook, amen. And once they reel that soul in, amen, you know what the first thing they throw away? The bait or throw away the Bible. Then they condition him and make that soul just like they want to. I know another group in the Bible who did that, amen. They were called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And you know what Jesus told them? He went on to tell them, he said, you encompass uh, land and sea just to get, amen, one convert or one proselyte. But after you get him, you make him twofold more, the child of hell than yourself. Amen. And that's just what people do. They use the Bible to draw the souls in. But after they get the soul, they throw away the Bible. And they begin to put their own personal conviction. Their corrupt teaching into those people. And you know what happened? Those people end up being, amen, just like the false preacher they're sitting under. All right. Now, he claims, Dr. Kinley claims he has the right interpretation of the Bible. Amen. As if he was the only prophet. But listen to this right here. We just read, let's go back to Peter. Peter said here, in the 20th verse, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. God just does not give the interpretation of the scripture to one individual. Amen. The Bible is made up of 60, uh, 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 six books. Amen. 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New. Amen. And it spans over. 4,000 years, Moses was a writer, amen, uh, 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 different prophets, uh, fishermen, people from all walks of life and from different time period. But the inspiration of an almighty God gave these people the understanding and the revelation that this biblical record may be recorded for you and I today. All right. And here it says here. Knowing this first is some things we got to know first. Amen. We don't have to guess about it. I know where I stand with the Bible. I believe the Bible, amen, is the infallible, infallible, infallible word of the living God. Amen. Look, when we pray to God, that's us talking to God. 
And when we open that Bible, that's him talking back to us. I could, amen, this was one of the first books I ever learned to read. Amen. And it has been a source of encouragement, a source of inspiration, a source of admonishment, a source of correction, a source of building up. Amen. Amen. Just a source, my total source. It has been my very fountain. Amen. That I'm able to drink at. It has been my food. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, the Bible. It is the very mouth of God. You know, someone pinned this acronym concerning the word Bible, B-I-B-L-E. It is the basics, instruction before leaving earth. I love that. Amen. So here, amen, it's saying knowing this first. But let's back up. 18 verse, and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in a holy mount. Amen. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. Why? Because the interpretations, amen, the understanding, amen, and the prophecy are all backed up by experience. Amen. Our Bible, it does not only work in prophecy, but it works down through time in history. Amen. And through the experience of many men of God who have stood the very test of time on the word of the living God. Okay. Now, let's turn to 1 John, the second chapter. Amen. Yes, 1 John, the second chapter and the 12th verse. Bear with us. We're still trying to lay a good foundation for the word of God. I mean, for our teaching here. Okay, 1 John, 2nd chapter, starting at the 12th verse. He said, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, Father, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Bible. Amen. I thank God for this. The problem that we have, why so many people are confused today, is because the Bible, amen, is not being taught no more in the home. But when you have a class of people or a family that have grew up with the Word of God, they're not easily confused. Because all of their lives, amen, the Bible has been their foundation. Look, I'm going to tell you, where the Bible has been substituted for the TV set, for the internet, for the computer, amen, you got a bunch of children, amen, just growing up like we. And lost parents produce lost children. Amen. A lot of times... You got parents, they depend on someone else teaching their children the Bible. Now, I'm not against Sunday school, but I don't believe that God just wholly designed for Sunday school to be the only basis whereby our children are able to receive the word of the living God. Amen. God wants us to teach it to our children. And here it is. He gives a list here. He talks about the fathers. He talks about the young men. He talks about the little children. He wrote unto them for a purpose that they may know God and have an experience with him. But most of our children don't know God for uh, because the parents doesn't know God. 14th verse. I have written unto you, Father, because you have known him from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you. The Bible said, train up a child in the way it is going, where, in the way it should go, and when it is old, it will not depart. If you want to make your child foolproof against all of this falseness, this confusion, amen, out here today, put the word of God in them. So they can know, thus says the Lord. He said, I have written unto you, Christ, even him coming up as a child, no doubt, amen, emerged himself in the scripture. 
and when he started on his ministry, and he was in the wilderness, amen, and the enemy came against him to tempt him in the wilderness, you know what he was able to say unto the devil? It is written. Can you say that? Amen. Can your children say that? Can your family say this? Can you say, look, you're not going to move me. This is some new brand of religion out here. Amen. This is not what the Bible teaches. And sometimes, amen, you may not know the Bible from A to Z. Or and have a full understanding about something. But when the word has, or, or you may can't even find certain scripture. But when you have sat under the teaching, when you have been saturated uh, 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 in the home, amen, or by your parents, been saturated with the Bible. When somebody comes to you with something false, you know, hey, that's not right. I wasn't taught that way. I don't believe that. You might can't figure it all out. But it's talking about a man in you that goes off like an alarm to let you know that ain't right. And you know there's an old saying, when you don't know what to do, don't do nothing. That way, you can't make a mistake. So here in 1 John, the second chapter and the 12th verse, he began to tell the family why he has written unto them. And then in the 15th verse, he lets them know to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why are we not to love the world? Because it was the world that crucified Christ. The Bible said, he that is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. You can't run with the world, amen, and he don't deliver you out of the world. We are aliens, amen. We are ambassador. We represent another world. Jesus said, if, uh, if my kingdom was of this world, then my servants would fight, amen. We are a new creature. We are aliens, amen, and just like, amen. That old hymn or old spiritual song said, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My mind is all made up to somewhere beyond the blue. The angels are beckoning me to heaven's open door. Hey, I can't feel at home in this world anymore. The problem, you got the world trying to be religious. You got people who profess to be Christian running right with the world. And if you running with them kind of people, you can't see the difference between them that serve God and them that serve him not. All right, here. In the 15th verse again, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the Father but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. Now, when this was wrote, somewhere around AD 100 or AD 90, it was the last time then. So if they, if they were looking at their age as if it was the last time, God help us, we're standing on the very brink of it. We're about to fall and step off into eternity. Christ is about to sound the great trumpet. Hallelujah. And one day he's going to come back. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And we, which are alive and remain, we're going to be caught up together. Amen. With him. To meet him in the clouds of the air. That time is coming. That time is just about near. Amen. So we need to know where we're at. In God, we need to take heed of this last time. There, this is not a time to be confused. Amen. This is definitely. Why? He's letting us know in the 18th verse, little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. One of the greatest marks. One of the greatest signs of this time is the fact that we have many, many antichrists, many, many false prophets. Well, what is an antichrist? These are spirits. These are doctrines. These are groups. Amen. These are movements that are against Christ and his teaching. That's antichrist. Let me tell you, see, the devil have you so full. You'll be waiting for some old man. To be on some throne and 
as if he's running a new world or order. And you know what? Any Price is knocking at your door, especially every Saturday morning. We call them Jehovah Witness. That's the Antichrist spirit. Mormons, Antichrist spirit. Amen. I dim M R. The Institute of Divine Metaphysics is an Antichrist spirit. Because first of all, they attack the Bible. Second of all, they attack the very name of Jesus. Whereby there is no other name under heaven whereby man can be saved. So for them to attack that and say that the name of Jesus is a pagan name, amen, oh, that stirs me, amen. You don't mess with my Jesus. Now, let me tell you something. I can't fight for Jesus, amen. He said, because if my kingdom was of this world, I would fight. But, Lord, he gave me a voice. I can stand for it. Therefore, stand in the liberty. Your Bible says, and when you have done all, stand. We can stand and declare what Jesus has done for us. Amen. He says, little children, 18 verse, it is the last time, as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. If there were many Antichrists back then, think about it. How many Antichrists are there now? He said, whereby we know that it is the last time. Listen, they went out from us. These are apostates. These are ones that at one point in their lives embraced the form of Christianity or embraced Christ. But because they wasn't willing to live right or they wanted to live a compromised life or they were wanting to give themselves over to the pleasures of this life, the pleasures of this world, or the pleasures of sin. They got deceived. They became deluded. But it goes on. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. Everybody that profess their coming in the name of the Lord, or everybody that profess to be a Christian, or everybody that got some right name above the door does not make them genuine, authentic Christian or a servant of the living God. All right? We have a more sure word of prophecy. And this word of prophecy have warned us that we're in the last time and warned us of these anti-Christian spirits. Okay, let's turn to the fourth chapter of, of the same letter, St. John, and look at the fourth verse. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. What do you mean, Brother Rick? Try these spirit. Didn't Moses, even in his day, as we read when we first initially began to open the teaching here about the test of a true prophet, if one speak presumptuously, and this thing does not come to pass, the Bible calls him a false prophet. Well, here is the test, again, or, or, or how we find out if this prophet is genuine. Listen, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. Try it. Prove it. Amen. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Let me ask you, do you really know the spirit of God? Amen. Do you know the spirit of God? You might say, how can I know the spirit of God? Well, first of all, you got to let the spirit of God come into you. Amen. You get the Spirit of God first by living a clean life. And once this uh, uh, um, temple is clean, amen, you begin to call upon and he will fill you with his presence. He will fill you with the Holy Spirit just like he filled that temple in the Old Testament. Just like he filled the tabernacle. The Bible teaches us that we are the temple of God. We're kings. We're priests. We're offering a living sacrifice. And God honors that sacrifice by giving you his divine presence to live within you. 
Amen. It's like heaven coming down and glory filling your soul. It's like that prudential insurance commercial of old. Hey, I got a piece of the rock. Let me ask you this. Do you have a piece of heaven? Do you have glory coming down and filling your soul? So here it is. It lets us know here. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus is come in the flesh is of God. And we're going to deal with this. Because the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, they believe that when Christ resurrected from the grave, he resurrected as a spirit. No, he didn't. He resurrected with uh, the same body he went in the grave with. How do you know? Old Doubting Thomas, remember that apostle? He didn't believe. He said he would not believe. Amen. Unless he could feel the scars in his hand and put his hand within his side. And one day, Jesus, when they were having fellowship, he walked through the door. And when Thomas saw him, Thomas began to do just that, feel the scars and feel his side. And he fell on his knees. He said, my Lord and my God. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, he said, look, a spirit don't have flesh and bones. Now, let me tell you, any spirit that any teacher, rather, that confesses that Jesus did not come in the flesh is an antichrist spirit. It's the same spirit that the agnostics had back in the early church. It's just in a different form. Glory. Second verse. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Oh, glory. Whereby you have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. Ye are of God, little children. Amen. We need to know our standing. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Amen. I told you you can overcome them. Look, your safeguard against false prophet, your safeguard against false spirits is the Holy Spirit himself. Well, glory. Ye are of God, little children, and, and have overcome them, because greater is he, talking about the Holy Ghost, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. It is a spirit that comes from the world. It was the spirit of the world that put our Savior to death. And it is the spirit of the world that wants to put the Savior again to death in you. By simply getting you to deny him. Deny him or go off some in some other false way. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. Amen. They speaking from the flesh. They're speaking from the world view. Amen. The, the philosophy of the world. Amen. And this wayward thinking. This secular humanism is no match for the spirit of the living God. Amen. Well, glory, they are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. This is the difference. When you are really of God, you don't get confused like that, because God is not the author of confusion. He that knoweth God heareth us. He said, my sheep Hear my voice, and they do follow me. He says, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. See, we can know the difference. Amen. We know them that are of God, know them that are not of God. We know truth from the spirit of error. Why? You have to experience this. You got to have something in you that fortify you against everything that represent anything false. 
Beloved, believe not every spirit. When all these spirits come against you, it is the spirit of God in you that rises up and gives you power over every spirit. And give you the power to overcome. Well, glory. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Thank God we have a more sure word of prophecy, and this is it. This is what we're teaching on tonight. Amen. Well, glory, glory, glory. I'm enjoying this myself. I am being fed right now, even as I'm teaching you. Thank God for the communication of the Holy Ghost. God has put his spirit in man. That even in him, even though he's way up in glory, he can make contact. Well, glory. Amen. Thank God. Second Peter. Let's turn there real quick. Second Peter, the second chapter. Let's go back. We're going to read one through the third verse. He said, but here it is. But there were false prophets also among the people. Let me tell you, isn't that false prophets today? So much more among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall br bring in damnable heresies, false teachers. Oh, my God. Oh, I've heard some of everything under the cloak of religion. People are doing all sorts of stuff. I couldn't even name them all. He says, but there were false Prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their per pernicious way by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Amen. And that's what it is. The way of truth. This way has been the same way and consistent for 2,000 years. Amen. And let me tell you something. People today are trying to speak evil of it. May God help these souls. All right. Let's turn. Amen. And we'll end it here for this part of the series. Jude. Jude is... Next, it's a small little letter. It's right next to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is the last book in the Bible. And Jude was a one-page letter. Amen. That's right next to Revelation. All right, Jude. We want to read 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of a common salvation. Amen. You know what? Salvation is common. It was so common among them, it was not just a lifestyle. It's the way they live. It was a life. Amen. The common salvation. Folks today, amen, they make serving God hard. They hard. They put all of these burdens on you. Amen. They put all these rules upon you. Amen. But it's a life. When you get his organic life in you. Let me tell you, it's not hard. It's just something you just do normally. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was need for me to write and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. It is time to roll up your sleeves, so to speak. It is time to contend, amen, for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. For we wrestle or not against flesh and blood, but spirit that are dwelling in high places. So therefore I exhort you, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand within this evil day. And when you have done all that you can do, amen, stand. We'll stand and don't give in. Don't give up and don't give out. It says here, and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in underwear who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men. Look, by your fruit you'll know. This is a proof in the pudding. Look at their life. 
for the most part, false prophets teaching doc, a false doctrine, they don't live nothing. They don't live above sin. A lot of them are full of lies and adultery, and they cannot cease from sin. They're yet practicing in sin. They're yet running with the world. Amen. That's the proof. Try them with the word. And it goes on. It says, For there are certain men crept in underwear who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance that you once knew this. Amen. Let me tell you, we're warning you. And we're going to get it in now. I know we only basically got to the first claim. <laughs> and that claim was, Dr. Henry C. Kinley only has the right interpretation of the Bible. I think the Bible were able to defend itself and prove it. And we were reading from the King James Bible, by the way. Amen for you all that has the authorized version. I thank God for that. But you know what? Thank God that through his word, we were able to find a more sure word of prophecy. And my question to you, is the Institute a divine, matter, physical, occult? And we went over the first lie. The first lie was they claimed that Henry C. Kinley only has the right interpretation of the Bible. And I think the Bible proved him a liar. Thank God. Amen.